What's up? It's your boy, DJ Slate in the building. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Adam Michelangelo Novelli. Man, it's going to be irritating in years when we're maybe even still using these videos for a flip classroom. And, and you got to hear that intro every time. That ought to be kind of your trademark, I guess. Yes, so my TM. So, hey, well, welcome. Hello, happy Tuesday. Uh, we are today going to be wrapping up Adolf Hitler. He is officially going to become chancellor. I do want to be clear here that, that just because he's chancellor does not mean he is a an authoritarian, but we'll handle the rest of that stuff later. We need to get to Castro start next week. So, uh, we're going to get Hitler to the chancellorship today. I'm excited about it. Uh, one point here that I need to make um, is that Otto, Otto, there were two Strassers. There's an Otto Strasser and a Gregor Strasser. Otto Strasser um, left the party. He was uh, he's kind of a, a big name leader in the socialist wing of the party. We actually already talked about him. Uh, you can go back to slide 82 and, and see what happened with him. But But to put it simply, um, Otto left the party in the mid-1920s, rejoined in 1925 when Hitler allowed, uh, after Hitler was done being in prison, when he sort of reconvened the party and said, look, you want to be in this party, you need to swear an oath of loyalty to me. Otto joined in, um, and uh, he would eventually be expelled from the NSDAP once and for all in, in 1930. They call this the Strasser crisis. He and several prominent socialists left the party. However, his brother Gregor would continue as the leader of the socialist wing of the NSDAP. He would actually be the minister of propaganda. It was Gregor Strasser who built the systems in the, in the party. He built the party infrastructure. Uh, and so much of the party stability and structure came as a result of Strasser, of Gregor Strasser's influence. So I wanted to put that out there uh, in case you might be confused by the, these, wait, I thought Strasser was out of the party. What? Now he's all of a sudden back in? That's because there's two of them, okay? And they were brothers. And just for the record, um, Gregor Strasser is going to be killed. He's going to die. Did you know that, Novelli? Yeah, I think we talked about that last year. Yeah, well, he's going to die. He's going to be murdered in the Night of the Long Knives, which is happening later. Okay, don't worry about that right now. So where are we? At this point, we know Hitler has not been able to get to that coveted seat of chancellor. Um, he wants to be chancellor. And he he's honestly, I mean, the German people are clear that the, that the Nazi party is the, the prevailing predominant party in Germany. They overwhelmingly have the largest number of seats in the Reichstag. And it should be the case that Hitler is chancellor. But he's been unable to attain it. Um, the Reichstag has voted no confidence in Papen's government at this point, uh, and an election was scheduled for November 6th, 1932. And that's where we're at right now. So today we're going to be going from November 6th, 1932 till January 30th, 1933. That's the, the time span here uh, that we're operating. Uh, between October 11th and no November 5th, Hitler goes on his fourth Germany flight, a massive propaganda effort on his part, flying all over Germany delivering in many cases three speeches a day. On one case, he delivered four speeches in one day. And despite these efforts, in the November election, the NSDAP suffered a catastrophic loss of momentum. They went from 37.4% of the Reichstag uh, after the July elections to 33.1% of the Reichstag in November elections. So they lost uh, uh, you know, what, 34 seats, right, in, in the Reichstag, which was a pretty significant loss. And it was appearing that uh, what Goebbels had, had been talking about earlier, Goebbels had been talking about earlier, um, that, that, that maybe they've reached the, the, the peak of their support in Germany. It looks like that might actually be the case. So they got to act now, okay? Uh, so as of this point, we know Poppin has no support in the Reichstag. They've already voted no confidence. That's why the elections were held in the first place. On November 17th, Poppin's entire cabinet resigned. They said, we're out. We, this government has no support from the people, and so we're not going to be party to it. And Hindenburg was left to govern on his own until a new cabinet could be formed. Poppin's days are, are essentially numbered. 
it's at this point that Hitler uh, asks for another meeting with Hindenburg. We remember the previous meeting, right? Hindenburg tells Hitler, you're not going to be chancellor. Uh, Hitler says, well, I, I won't be responsible for any terrorist activities that might happen as a result of this. Hitler gets another meeting on the 19th of November. And in this meeting presents a list of 20 names of big business, all showing their support for Adolf Hitler as chancellor. And, and keep in mind that big business to this point had still on the whole um, put their support behind Poppin and his policies. But what was beginning to happen was uh, some prominent members of the big business community were throwing their weight uh, behind Adolf Hitler. Um, uh, the agricultural lobby was the one that everyone was watching though. Who are they gonna support? Um, Hindenburg was still not quite wavering in his support of Poppin, despite the fact that the Reichstag has voted no support, despite the fact that his entire cabinet has resigned. Hindenburg was really unwilling to this point to get rid of him. Um, November 21st, Hitler again says, I, I, I demand the role of chancellor. Hindenburg says, no, it's not going to happen. In the meantime, Schleicher um, is beginning to maneuver. Uh, he is interested in becoming the chancellor. And uh, remember, Schleicher is the guy who really got, uh, he, he sort of began to raise the prospects of including the NSDAP in government, uh, even before he became the Minister of Defense. Uh, at this point, he's basically the Minister of Defense. He's, he's the leader of the military, the armed forces in Germany. <clears throat> and what he decides to do is, he reaches out to Gregor Strasser, basically man number two in the NSDAP, the leader of the socialist wing of the Nazi party. And he throws a, 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 an opportunity out to him. He says, look, if I'm named chancellor someday, you should consider being my vice chancellor. You know, I think that we could really, me as the chancellor, and you as, the, as, a, as one of the prominent members of the NSDAP, I think we could really bridge a lot of gaps in Germany you could bring in the Nazis, at least the socialist wing of the Nazis, and you could bring in trade unions. And you know, I'm conservative enough, this is Schleicher, I'm conservative enough to keep big business in, right? Big business does not like trade unions. Trade unions are bad for business, businessmen. They don't want unions. So he's like, you know, I got connections in the big business world. You got connections with trade unions. We could merge the two and form a pretty strong government. You should consider being vice chancellor. Right. Well, when the pressure gets ratcheted up to Hindenburg, what are you going to do, man? The Reichstag doesn't like Poppin. They want him out. Uh, big business is still behind Poppin. But, you know, uh, what, what are you going to do? Uh, Hindenburg finally on the, the 2nd of, um, uh, uh, well, I, I shouldn't say on the 2nd of December. That's another situation. But as of December 2nd, uh, 1932, Hindenburg is sticking with his man, Poppin. And then Schleicher shares the news of some war game activities that he had had the, the, the army engaging in. And the news was this. The news was, if there's a civil war, which was likely, according to Schleicher, as a result of Hindenburg's support of Poppin, right? Nobody wants Poppin in his chancellor, but the president is keeping him there. This could create civil war. Schleicher says, if there is a civil war as a result of you keeping Poppin, in as the chancellor, the army won't be able to stop it. We are not strong enough. We do not have the ability to stop a civil war. So you need to get rid of Poppin uh, or face the potential of a, of a catastrophic civil war. And this would jeopardize Hindenburg's position as president, right? If there's a civil war, uh, you might be overthrown. And so Hindenburg's like, all right, fine. Uh, I'm gonna have to release Poppin and I have to replace him with, drum roll, please. Schleicher. And so uh, early December, December 2nd, 1932, Schleicher is now in his chancellor. All right? And now the question is, what's Strasser gonna do? And there's really three options for Strasser. Do I take the position of vice chancellor and completely implode the NSDAP by jumping over the, the man that I swore an oath of loyalty to 
who's, who's been offered the position of vice chancellor, but Hitler said, no, I, I will only take the, the chancellor position. Do I, do I leapfrog him and say, yeah, I'll take the, the vice chancellor position? Option two is, do I not take the vice chancellor position and tacitly admit that Hitler is the boss of me? Or do I resign from the NSDAP because I don't want to be in government? I also don't want to admit that Hitler's the boss of me. And he resigns. And this is, by the way, why ultimately Hitler is going to have him killed in the Night of the Long Knives is because he saw this as treachery. When the, the leader of the socialist wing of the NSDAP says, I'm out, that's going to just be like, you are trying to weaken and undermine the whole party. Uh, Novelli, you got any questions? No, nope, I'm just following this political oh. back and forth. It's a lot. It's pretty crazy, huh? And then yeah. it gets crazier. It gets even wilder. So Poppins out, Schleicher's in. Um, you see here uh, that he resigns. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Strasser resigns from the NSDAP. They call this, I, I, they call it a Strasser crisis, another one um, in the NSDAP. Uh, there was a moment where Hitler, uh, Goebbels, Goring, uh, you know, some of the high ranking officials in the Nazi party believed it was over, right? They had just lost the November election. Uh, they didn't lose it, but they, they, they had significant losses relative to where they were in July. Um, and now that the entire socialist wing might be leaving us and Hitler um, really softened up in the party for one night. He's like, look, man, we're going to get through this. And some of the people who witnessed this conversation he had in the party talked about that. This is where he showed his kind of his mastery with influencing people. Um, you know, he said, we're going to be fine. And, and, and he said, we're going to get rid of all, anyone who is a Strasser acolyte either needs to pledge allegiance to or loyalty to me or they're out of the party. And so he did. They removed several prominent Strasser acolytes, followers of Strasser from the party um, to try to just undo, you know, basically said, look, it, everyone who is a Strasserite is going to be, you know, they're treacherous. They can't be trusted. You're out. And uh, and he eventually convinces the, the people, the, the leaders of the Nazi party that things are going to be fine. Uh, and, uh, and, and Strasser's out. Now, keep in mind, Strasser was the ninth member of the Nazi party when it was reformed in 1925. He's going to do all he can to try to convince Hitler before he dies, before Strasser dies. He's going to try to convince Hitler that he's still loyal, uh, but Hitler would never, ever see it as anything other than an act of treachery. So two weeks, let's go. December 16th, 1932, Poppin is out giving a, 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 a jealousy tour. He's on a jealousy tour. I'm angry at Schleicher. He undermined me. And the, his, he's giving these speeches. He gives one speech on the night of December 16th in front of 300 guests. The theme was, I was successful. Schleicher's cabinet is terrible. And the Nazis should be included in government. These were his, his speech points. And there was one prominent businessman in attendance, Kurt von Schroeder who said, who is a friend of Hitler's and he's a friend of Poppins. He says, look, I know that you don't like Hitler. I know that Hitler hates you, um, but why don't we get together and talk? You know, I think if we can get together and get you two talking, we might be able to retake the government with you at the helm, Poppin. So he orders, he, he uh, doesn't order, he offers a meeting at his crib. And they all meet on January 4th, 1933. It's, it's Hitler, it's uh, Goring, it's uh, uh, Schroeder, it's Poppin, right? <clears throat> and Schroeder, Poppin, and Hitler meet together privately in a room. And uh, it's in this room where it was proposed that they form a duumvirate, just like a two-headed giant, with Poppin and Hitler as the leaders of government, uh, uh, sort of co-chancellors. In this conversation, Hitler had reduced some of his demands. He said, I still need to be chancellor, but maybe I don't need as many cabinet positions for my Nazi members. So Poppin is like, you know, he sees some promise. Man, look at Hitler's kind of conceding on some things. So Poppin then or calls a meeting with Hindenburg and says, let me tell you, buddy, because, you know, even though Poppin's no longer chancellor, he's still really good friends with Hindenburg. So he has the opportunity to just sit and talk with the president when he feels like it. 
He's, Hitler's starting to waver a little bit. He's showing um, some softening of his demands. And Hindenburg's like, all right, you know what? I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to say yes, but just keep in touch. <clears throat> About a week later, um, Poppin uh, tells Hindenburg, I'm sorry, tells Hitler. So Poppin and Hitler have another meeting about a week later. He says, look, I don't know if I have the influence with Hindenburg um, to get you the sole position of chancellor. And Hitler says, well, too bad. I need to be the, the chancellor. It's either that or no. Uh, notice he's still digging his heels in. And again, I want to point out the importance of this, of this Schroeder connection, right? Like without Schroeder, the big businessman, right, connecting Hitler and, and popping, these, these conversations don't even happen. Uh, it just happened that Schroeder was in this speech, right? Uh, and it's kind of luck. It's, it's a, a whole lot of luck for Hitler. In the meanwhile, Schleicher makes a terrible decision not to impose import tariffs on, on agriculture um, being sent in from outside of Germany. And this turns the entire farming industry, the agrarian industry against Schleicher. And none of the political parties are willing to support uh, Schleicher because they don't want to lose farmers. Right? They don't want to lose the support of farmers in their political party. So Schleicher ends up becoming isolated. And then... The, a crazy scandal happens. Uh, it's called the Osthilf Eastern Aid Scandal. Um, this is in, in late January that this scandal hits the, the, the headlines. And basically what, what is revealed was that in 1929, 1930, so the beginning of the Great Depression, while everyone in Germany is broke, farmers are, are losing their farms. Um, while this was all happening, the German government decided to bail out wealthy estate holders in Prussia by, by allowing, uh, by, by essentially uh, providing them aid uh, to, 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 to get out of the bankruptcies that they were facing. Uh, and uh, what ends up happening is one of the bankruptcies that occurred uh, was President Hindenburg's brother. He lost his estate in Prussia. And, and a bunch of big businessmen get together and they purchase this estate and then gift it to President Hindenburg. While all of these farmers are losing their farms and uh, all, you know, the, the, the government decides to open up the sale of estates to big businessmen at a significantly reduced price. And President Hindenburg's brother's estate is purchased and gifted to President Hindenburg, but that's not the scandal. The scandal was that the estate was put in President Hindenburg's son's name, Oscar Hindenburg. And the reason for that was so that when President Hindenburg dies, Oscar Hindenburg would not have to pay estate taxes in order to keep the estate. Uh, so he would essentially he was given this estate free and clear. And the obvious here is that big, these big businessmen were going to get political favors from President Hindenburg. And Hindenburg is furious. He's not furious that, that this information is out there. He's furious that Schleicher didn't step up and cover it up. He says, Schleicher, you were supposed to make this go away. And now my name is tarnished. Schleicher, I've never liked you. Your influence in my life is, is waning. He didn't, he didn't fire him, but he's basically said, Schleicher, don't, even, don't bother with me anymore. You don't have any influence. He's pretty upset. On January 18, 1933, amidst this, this crazy scandal, popping and Hitler meet. Hitler says, I need the chancellorship now. Look at Schleicher is losing influence. He's on his way out. Poppin says, look, I, I hear you, man. I just don't know if I have the influence to get you there. And then one of Hitler's compatriots in the NSDAP, Ribbentrop, you're probably familiar with this name, right? What's the, what's the pact? The Nazi-Soviet non-aggression pact. The... Uh, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact is where this is from. Uh, Ribbentrop says, what if we met with Hindenburg's son? What if we meet with his son and see if maybe his son can leverage some influence here? 
And so January 22nd, Hitler, Frick, Goring, and Ribbentrop meet with the son of the, pre the president, Oscar Hindenburg. <clears throat> he says, look, I'll see what I can do. I'll talk to my dad. Poppin gets word of this, says, look, I will put my support to you, Hitler. I'll throw my support in there, but you better promise me vice chancellor. We don't need to have a duumvirate. I'll be the second fiddle. If you can make this happen, I will throw my support behind you, but I have to be vice chancellor. I want to have control of the economics in Germany. Hitler's like, yeah, that's cool. I don't care about economics. I care about law enforcement. January 23rd, 1933, Schleicher informs Hindenburg the Reichstag is going to issue a vote of no confidence. He says, please, Mr. President, dissolve the Reichstag. President says, I don't know about that. Hindenburg, he's like, I don't like Schleicher and the chancellorship. I, I also don't want Poppin in there because even though Poppin's my favorite, the government already, remember, they already declared a vote of no confidence in Poppin. And so Hindenburg's like, man, I, I don't know what to do. January 28, 1933, Schleicher says, look, I don't have the president behind me. I don't have the right stake behind me. I'm going to resign. So he resigns the chancellorship. At this point, Hindenburg gets a hold of Poppin and says, look, man, you're not going to be chancellor, but I need your help in forming a new cabinet. I want you to form the cabinet, but you don't, you're not going to be chancellor. Poppin's like, all right. So he's like, look, Hitler, I will make you chancellor. I will throw my weight behind you as chancellor, but you have to promise me that you're going to limit your power. You're not going to abuse your power. Hitler says, yeah, I mean, yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah, sounds good. Whatever you say. Um, Poppin said, look, I need to be the minister of economics. Hitler's like, no. <laughs> He's still digging his heels in. And look, up until this point, Poppin and Schleicher had both been allowed to have control over Prussia. And, and Hitler's like, I want control over Prussia. And Poppin's like, no, that's too much power. Hitler's like, all right, fine. I won't be the leader of Prussia then. And, that, and by the way, Prussia's the largest state. It'd be like, you know, the president having control over California, right? It's like, it's a, it's a largest state. It's a, there's a lot of influence in Prussia. And so Hitler is like, fine. Yeah, I don't need it. And this, by the way, is exactly what Hindenburg needed to see from Hitler. Hitler is conceding. He's, he's, he's letting go of some of the power that he wants. He's going to get it eventually, right? But Hindenburg sees this new softened Hitler. He's like, all right, look, I will give Hitler the chancellorship but it's, it's, he only gets two cabinet members. I only want him having two cabinet members. I want every other member of the cabinet to be conservative. I don't want them to be Nazis. So we're talking DNVP, right? Some Zentrum members, like let's, let's, let's try to keep things moderate here. And Hitler's like, all right, look, that's fine. But I need a promise that Goring gets to be Poppin's deputy in the Prussian Ministry of the Interior, which would give Nazis the control over the police in Prussia. Hitler said, I will still honor you, Mr. President, as the president, not gonna try to undermine your authority, not gonna take your Article 48 powers away. Poppin would get control over the economic sphere. This guy, Hugenberg, who was gonna be a member of this cabinet, a big businessman, he believed that they were boxing Hitler in. Another guy, Dusterberg, said, dude, you're crazy about that. No, you're going to find yourself one night fleeing through ministerial gardens in your underpants to avoid arrest. Just wait. Watch what happens if Hitler gets control of the police. This is a warning. People saw what was coming. One of Poppin's friends warned him, said, look, you're putting yourself in Hitler's hands, man, by conceding the, to, to be vice chancellor and not forcing him to share chancellorship. You're putting yourself in Hitler's hands. Poppin said, nah, you're mistaken, bro. We hired Hitler. Like he's in our hands. Hitler had one last demand before he accepted the title of chancellor, and that was this. We need to force an enabling act through the Reichstag. This would allow the chancellor to rule without dependency on the Reichstag or even on presidential backing for emergency decrees, according to Kershaw. An agreement was made, popping through his weight behind Hitler. 
the Reich president, Hindenburg, says, okay, here we go. And on January 30th, 1933, at 11 a.m., Adolf Hitler is sworn in as chancellor of Germany. According to Go Goebbels, Hitler is Reich chancellor, just like a fairy tale. And it would turn out that uh, Hitler's biding of time and his stubborn unwillingness to waver and take side deals and all those things that Strasser wanted him to do, it ended up paying off because he got what he was looking for. So there you have it. Hitler is chancellor. Got any questions, Novelli? Well, you know, one thing that is kind of striking to me, you know, this is all, it all kind of happened very quickly because at the beginning of this lecture, you noticed, uh, you pointed out that in November, they had kind of a setback from an electoral standpoint um, from the Nazis. And then so from November to the end of January, um, to go from a reduction in seats in the Reichstag to becoming Reich Chancellor, that's kind of, that's kind of surprising, isn't it? Yeah, and that's what's crazy. You know, when we when we go way back in this slideshow, right? We go way back to um, uh, Kershaw made a really good point that I included in. I think it was at one of the end of the uh, one of these slides here. Um, he he basically it, it was this crazy irony that he, after winning an election in July where they had just a massive victory in the polls. Hitler was not made chancellor. And right here, um, he says that, uh, that the chancellorship was, was refused to Hitler after he had won a victory in July and then handed to him after he'd suffered a defeat in the November yeah. elections was not attributed to any triumph of the will, right? It was, it was really a matter of social capital, right? Um, Schroeder, the meeting with Schroeder and, and having the opportunity to have this big businessman bridge pop in and, and Hitler, you know, even though they really didn't like each other very much, bring them back together. But again, it was Schleicher's treachery to, that made Poppin even out there in the first place saying, this guy's got to go, you know? It's just, it's very odd. Yes. And it's, it's timing matters. Well, there's a lot of luck here. Yeah. Um, and so um, you know, Poppin was humiliated in, in the, when he was first removed. Remember that crazy scene in the Reichstag where Poppin's like, I got, I have the dissolution order, but the communists are like, we call a vote. Yeah. Poppin out, you know, he's out. Get rid of him. They voted, they voted him out of office. And he was a no, he was a loser, right? He was a huge loser. And for him to then get <laughs> brought back in with Hitler is pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Wild. So, so there you go. If, if y'all have any questions on this, don't hesitate to jump into office hours on Friday. We'd love to help you out with this if you're, if you're struggling. Uh, obviously, having it be a video, you can just rewind it again, um, which is kind of nice. So. Uh, but I uh, hope everyone is doing well out there um, and uh, look forward to uh, learn a little bit about Castro starting next week. You ready for that, yeah. Novelli? Oh, yeah. Castro next week. I'm looking forward to it. Let's go. All right, man. All right, guys. We'll see you all later. Take good care.